Do you guys ever have those games where you're going like 30 and 10 and you just feel on top of the world like nothing can stop you? Like honestly, Sentinels could recruit you to replace 10s and no one would even notice. But your teammates just suck and your, your team is still losing? Well, did you ever wonder that it could be your fault? One of the biggest misconceptions plaguing the Valorant community is that everyone thinks that frags equals skill. And while that's true sometimes, it's not true all of the time. Think about it. Let's say you got a jet who just waits back and lets everyone die first. Everybody he has was baiting jets every now and then. Then that same jet proceeds to get two kills because it's a five versus one and the enemies are just running at him at the end of the round. So from the leaderboard standpoint, it's going to look like jet is the team MVP. But is she really? The kill she had had no real impact on the outcome of the game. So while she thinks she carried the game, she really didn't. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, impact frags. So what is an impact frag? Well, to start, there's two types, high and low. A high impact frag is a kill that heavily affects the outcome of the round. This could be a first blood, a kill when you're down a player, or maybe a big clutch, something like that. A low impact frag is something like I mentioned before. It's a five versus one, and you manage to take a few down with you. Now those kills aren't gonna mean much for the team, unless they're on low economy. But impact kills aren't the only way you could have an impact on your team winning the round. You could get no kills and still win your team the round. You could be 0-18 as Reyna, and you honestly could be the most important player on your team. Your impact on a game is not actually based on your kills, but on how well you're playing your role. This is why some people say that it's a lot easier to carry in a game like CS, where you could buy smokes, flashes, and everything you want for yourself, and you don't have to rely on little Timmy to do all these things for you. So this is why you really need to play your role well, because your teammates can't do it for you. Maybe you're a crazy sentinel and you can single-handedly hold on a site on your own, and you tell your team to stack the other site. Then the enemy goes to the stack site and you guys win. Well, you were the reason why your team won the round, thus you honestly had the highest impact. Or maybe you're the best smoker in the world, you're always trading off your duelist, you're smoking off all the right things at the right times for your teammates. It might sound simple, but it has such a big impact on whether or not your team wins the game. Just keep in mind, you don't need to make some huge play or have like 50 kills a game to like carry your team. Each decision and every movement you make has some form of impact on your game. And that's what makes Valorant great. So today on Skillcapped, we're going to be going over one of our viewers' VODs and show them and you guys how to have more impact on your games. I'm going to show you good examples, bad examples, and how you can fix your mistakes so you can avoid making them in the future. Now before we get into the VOD review, I just want to say that if you're looking for guides for other parts of the game, like running defense, faults or performing executes, we have those as well at Skillcapped. We also have Smurf commentaries where Radiant level players talk you through their games and show you how they have direct impact on their games. Or maybe if you wanted to learn how to play a certain map, a specific agent, or just how to get better in general, we can help you with that too. We also have a rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't see a rank improving, you'll get your money back. But there's literally so much value here, I find it hard that you honestly won't improve. If you're looking for the fastest way to climb in Valorant, be sure to check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. So starting off on round one, take a look at our positioning here. Each agent has different spots that you should be playing, and Reyna just simply isn't a good spot that fits her kit. Especially in round one, most rounds are simply an A hit or a B hit, and Reyna isn't in any position to get any kills or make any sort of play for her team. Reyna specializes in sitting on off angles, getting a kill, and being able to distance away. A better spot to play would be closer towards the buy barrier so she can get a quick kill and run away, or maybe towards the top of ramp and try to take a fight. Not only should she be taking fights, but the reason why it's so important is that it forces the enemy to respect that in later rounds, and waste utility to clear her out or risk taking a fight with you, which is exactly what Reyna's wants. Think about it. The enemy is going to think, oh, Reyna could be playing close. I'll flash to clear her out. Now that you've conditioned your enemy to use that flash on those close angles, they won't have as much utility to use on the execute or to disrupt your team's retake. So if they were to appreciate this round, Reyna's impact on this round would be very low as she's probably going to get it easily traded after a jet dash, or not even get any kills by holding this weird angle. And on future rounds, the enemy isn't going to respect any sort of aggression and dump all of the utility on the site, making it impossible to hold. Keep in mind, positioning for each agent is going to be different, obviously. Sentinels and controllers are going to be more passive as the utility is more important to the team's success, while duelists and initiators want to be a bit more aggressive as they should look to take the map control. So for a few rounds now, I've watched Reyna and her teammate rotate through spawn to help their teammates elsewhere, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but why not try to flank? If you take a look at the enemy team comp, you'll notice that they don't have anyone to watch their backs. They only have a sage. So in order to watch flanks effectively, they have to have someone dedicated to watching them at all times, which takes away from their power to push the site. But they don't need anyone watching the flank if you never flank them. So if a team, like this one, is five pushing places like a bunch of apes, a quick flank would punish them for doing that. Not only would flanking punish a five push, but it also tells your teammates where the enemy can't be. If you pushed all the way through sewers and have made it to mid without making any contact, then your team is going to know that they're all holed up in B and then can stack the site. Keep things like this in mind when facing any team comp. If the enemy team doesn't have smokes, and yes I've seen it before, then you can hold super safe angles like in screens where you can just hide when the enemy tries to trade you out. Does the enemy team not have good flashes? 
Try Opping. It's going to be really hard for the enemy to punish you while using it. Paying attention to the tools your enemy has and doesn't is another great way to make an impact for your team. Something I want to touch on briefly is the use of your mic and importance of your minimap. Both provide a ton of value information. And throughout this game, no one is talking to each other, no teamwork, game plan, nothing. Everyone just sort of groups up at a site and hits it, or everybody just holds a certain spot and nobody tells each other what they're hearing, what they're seeing, or anything. But if you tell your teammates what your plan is for the round, it's going to be a lot easier to win since you're all on the same page. Not only that, but by telling your teammates what you hear and see, you'll have a lot better understanding of the site that the enemies are about to hit. And I've been there. To be honest, the only time that I used to come when I was in lower elos is when I was in a Discord call with my friends. So if you don't have any friends, uh, we do have a Discord that you can join, and you can probably queue with some people that won't throw your elo. Link in the description below. So if your teammates aren't talking to you, be sure to look at your minimap and a lot. For example, let's take a look at this round. If Reyna simply looked at her minimap, she'd know that there was 5 in A lobby, giving her the freedom to push up as deep as her spawn. If she pushes up that far, the enemy probably isn't going to 5 push anymore, and she probably could have taken them by surprise and gotten 2 or even more kills. So for the next topic I want to discuss is utility usage. Some would say that most of Valorant is utility usage, and that's what makes Valorant unique. And if you don't know how to use your abilities, you're not going to win very often. This round, our Reyna decides to flash B main peek and then run away. The problem with this is that she didn't do anything with that flash. The attacking team decided to give up B main by not playing anyone there. And because no one was there, Reyna got control of B main simply by using that one flash, but she gave it up. If you're going to use your utility to get aggressive and take map control, and it isn't met by other aggression, you probably should lurk up and take that space. This map control concept is similar to what I said earlier about flanking, and that it basically tells you where the enemy isn't. And since she used that flash and didn't take the map space, she essentially wasted it. Speaking of wasting abilities, let's take a look at this round where Reyna's ultimate isn't even used. Like, she uses it, but she doesn't use it. So at first, Reyna seems to be holding a decent crossfire. Once her teammates start making contact in mid, she decides to take the robe up and try to help. Now, if you ever don't know what you should be doing in a ranked game, you should always ask yourself, how can I help my teammates? So Reyna pops her ultimate as the sage makes contact, but instead of helping her fight, she stands back and watches her teammates fight. Then Brimstone goes to fight, and she watches him die too. Like, like what are you doing? As a matter of fact, Reyna doesn't even shoot a single bullet while in her ultimate, and she wastes it. She might just be too afraid to fight. I don't know. Here, listen to what I said during the VOD review. I, I think I said it pretty well. Okay, so you're mad at your Jeff for not helping you, which is understandable. But you have to understand that he right here, as soon as these guys start fighting, you got to be with them. Like, you should be fighting. You should be pushed up here. If this Rimstone's fighting, you got to be pushed up with him. So yeah, Jet wasn't helping you, but... Also, at the same time, you weren't helping your team either. You need to push up and like take this fight, especially as Reyna and your ult. Yeah, every day, this should be a fight that you want to take. When your teammates are fighting, when your teammates are fighting, a good rule of thumb is just to fight with them, you know? Or if he's peeking, he should tell you that, and he should peek with you. Just help your teammates fight, folks. You'll win a lot more games, trust me. Now, let's take it over to the second half, where Reyna is now on the offensive side. The plan seems to be a B split, with Reyna and Sova going up mid, and the other three people going through B main. While on paper this sounds fine, there's just not a whole lot going on in mid. Reyna and Sova seem to be not making any presence known in mid, while their teammates are taking heavy fire from heaven. If they just hurried up, their teammates on site would probably appreciate them helping by drawing some gunfire away from them. There's only three people on site, and they're not really in good spots. It's going to be hard for them to push the site with only three of them. Not only that, but Reyna wants to be taking aim duels. Instead, she's just baiting her teammates. If her three teammates were to die on B, this is going to turn into one of those situations that I talked about before. She's either going to have to make a miraculous play, or she's just going to be getting a bunch of non-impact frags. And while it looks good on the leaderboard, her team still lost. Now don't get me wrong, it's not a bad idea to have somebody lurk, it's just not Reyna's role. So for our last round, we're going to be taking a look at Reyna's utility usage here. This first round is an economy round, so it isn't that big of an issue here. But she's wasting her flash again. Her teammates are already deep onto site, and she needs to have her gun out here to trade her teammates. If somebody swings them, she's not going to have the time to pull her gun back out and trade them. And it gives the enemy a lot more time to reposition, reset their crosshair placement, and try to take another 1v1 on the Reyna. Now it'd be a bit different if she flashed earlier. Had she done that, she'd be protecting her teammates from anyone trying to peek them as they enter the site. Now this next round demonstrates that this Reyna doesn't know how far her flashes go and how she should be using them. She doesn't throw her flash deep enough so it doesn't really cover much ground. Anyone holding heaven or rafters or hell or peeking from back screen isn't going to get flashed. And the more enemies that are flashed means the higher impact that she had on the round. If she wants help with her flashes, she should look at her minimap because it literally shows you where the flash is going to go and basically what it's going to flash. A flash more further out would have blinded anyone in heaven, hell, backside, screens, elbow, peeking out of heaven. Literally everyone would have been blind. And the reason why that's so important is because the enemies have to shoot that blind in order to see again. And then when they shoot it, you know where they are and then you can kill them. But 
since the flash was short she got killed from heaven and her team basically lost the round so this was all just one in-depth guide that we have on our website though and if you want a chance at having your vod reviewed be sure to subscribe on our website at skillcap.com we also have tons of radiant smurf commentaries where we have radiant players walk you through exactly how to have the most impact possible during a game and they're super helpful to see in real time what goes through a top tier player's head as you mentioned before it's also backed by a rank improvement guarantee and the reason we do that is because we're just that confident that our service works and if it doesn't work you shouldn't have to pay so what are you waiting for you've got nothing to lose head on over to skillcap.com and get started on your way to that rank that you deserve so i hope you guys understand how you can make more of an impact on your rank games it can be really frustrating to lose games and it's easy to blame your teammates but sometimes doing a vod review like this can really help you realize what's losing your games and most of the time it isn't really your teammates it could be you. But as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And that's all for us. I'm Teets, and we here at Skullcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.